Okay, as you know, this week we are going to be uh, having a practical over lab equipment. And so what I wanted to do to make this a little bit easier, to give you a chance to study at home or in your spare time in class, if, they, if your teacher will let you uh, watch a video on your laptop, uh, hopefully with some headphones. But I want to go over all our lab equipment. That way you guys will be prepared for the test that you guys have this Friday. Uh, you will have a word bank, so uh, actually knowing how to spell the items is not that big a deal and you will be able to mark out what you've seen that way uh, there's not going to be any repeated items in the lab so I want to get started and kind of show you uh, some of the things that will be on there I think everything here has the potential of being on the practical but not necessarily will everything be there okay so this right here is a graduated cylinder uh, we remember that because it looks like a graduation hat this is used to measure volume of liquids and this particular graduated cylinder measures accurately up to 50 milliliters. They come in many different sizes. This is a funnel. This helps us to uh, pour liquids and sometimes, uh, you know, fine powder into other uh, bottles or containers so that it gives us a bigger opening so that when we pour it in there, it, you know, doesn't make a mess. Okay, these are pH uh, papers or pH slips. And we use these to determine whether or not a, a liquid is an acid or base. And if you notice around the uh, situation here, it ranges from a, a 1 to a 14. And so these colors are significant based upon what color these change when they, where they're put in a substance. If the color is uh, following in somewhere that, that shows it to be a 1 to a uh, right up to a 7 almost, then you know you're dealing with something that's an acid. And then if the number falls past 7, so let's say it's a little higher than 7 and goes to 14, then you know you're dealing with something that's a base. Okay? These indicators will not change the chemical that you're dealing with. It simply just makes a reaction on the paper that allows you to see what substance uh, might be. So a simple acid might be something like uh, vinegar, where um, you know acids tend to taste really... Uh, sour, they, they burn if they get in your eyes or skin, uh, like in a cut. Um, strong acids can obviously eat away at your skin. Um, bases uh, tend to be slippery and soapy. Uh, they even taste uh, kind of kind of soapy-ish. Um, bases are things like soaps, laundry detergents, uh, things like that. And we will do an acid lab this year. Okay, this is just a thermometer. Uh, this is a Celsius thermometer because we use Celsius in science. Uh, this, the red bulb here at the end lets me know that this thermometer is actually an alcohol thermometer and that is not toxic. So we use these uh, nowadays. We used to use mercury thermometers. They're a little bit more accurate, but the problem with mercury is if it breaks, then you have a toxic substance that you're dealing with. Okay, this is a pipette. A pipette simply uh, allows you to squeeze up a certain amount of volume of liquid and move it into another container. Uh, these aren't as accurate as the ones they normally use in labs these days in professional areas, uh, but they're, they're okay. They're okay for lab settings, and so we use these for different types of chemical labs. Uh, this right here is a scalpel, and the scalpel blade is actually covered with tape just to kind of protect us while we're looking at it, but the scalpel is used for dissections to cut into organisms. Okay, speaking of dissections, we have a dissection probe. These probes can either be bent or, or just straight. And the probe is simply meant to uh, pull away uh, the, the flesh or the skin or muscle tissue or organs away from one another when you're doing dissections. Or if you're wanting to point something out to somebody, then you could use a probe uh, to help do that during a dissection. So if you want to say this is a kidney or, or these are the uh, fallopian tubes or something like that, this would be one of those items you could assist you in showing other people things. Okay, so this is a uh, dissection pan. Uh, some pans will have uh, wax in them or they'll have rubber in them. And that way when you have your frog or fetal pig or whatever you might be dissecting, uh, it allows you to put pins into the skin or the muscles as you move it back to be able to get into the internal organs and the pins, uh, this is actually a dissection pin. A lot of people say it looks like a nail, but it's not as big as a nail, really. It's more like a pin, but it's a really strong pin, okay? 
Um, one of the other items we have, I don't see it here. Um, I'll try to find it here in a minute and, and I'll refer to it. Oh, here it is right here. These are also items we'll use in dissections. Uh, this is a, a medicine dropper or eyedropper. I think on the practical, it'll probably be called an eye drop or yeah, eye dropper. But it's just to move fluid, small amounts of fluids back and forth. It's a lot like a pipette. Probably not as accurate as a pipette. Okay. Then these are just uh, scissors. You can call them dissection scissors, but we use them for different things. Mostly in dissections, they're really useful for cutting away the top layers of tissue. Uh, whenever you're opening up an organism, or if you need to remove an organ, you can clip away uh, different parts of the organism's uh, organ to, to get it out. Okay, this is a hand lens. Lots of people call them magnifying glasses, but in science we're going to call them a hand lens. That's what this will be referred to on the practical, okay? Um, this little item right here, uh, most students know these as tweezers. We're not going to call them tweezers in here. Uh, these are forceps, and forceps can be used for lots of different things in science, but we mostly relate them to dissection in most cases. Uh, we use these to help pull apart things when we're dissecting organisms. Okay, this right here, this is a 24 microwell plate. Uh, that's micro well, and you'll see these a lot of times in shows where they're doing like CSI, that kind of stuff, and they're doing lab tests to test people's blood or uh, body fluids and things like that. So you can do lots of different tests at the same time. You could do cell sample tests and things like that. And so uh, they come in different sizes. They can come with 100. They could come with 50. They could come with as little as, as 4. So these can be different sizes, but we just call them micro well plates. The cover is really essentially to keep, uh, keep them from becoming contaminated when you're growing specimens in, a, uh, in some sort of an incubator or if you have something that's going on, it's just to protect what you have going on inside, okay? So that's just a cover to cover it up. Okay, this item here is a flask. The big name on this is an Erlenmeyer flask. Uh, you just need to know the word flask, okay? This, will re uh, this also measures volumes of liquids. Uh, it is a 225 milliliter flask. And if you notice, it, run, it ranges from 150 to 200 right here. So you got a 50 milliliter difference between those two lines. The midline would be a 25 millimeter mark or milliliter. So uh, this uh, Erlenmeyer flask is accurate to 25 milliliters. And what I mean by that is if the volume of liquid falls below or between those lines, then you have to guess what volume is in here, uh, much like a beaker, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Okay. Okay, this, this, uh, this is just a rubber stopper. Rubber stoppers are used to go on the tops of flasks, and uh, you'll see them sometimes for test tubes. And those are just to maintain the contents inside that can prevent a spill. But you'll notice this one has a hole in the top. The hole allows us to put a, uh, a glass tube uh, that can go inside of here, and then we can run hoses and things like that off of that tube. And that way if we are evaporating something, trying to get gas, or we have a chemical reaction and we want to capture the gas that's uh, resulting from that reaction, it's the, the uh, product of that reaction, then uh, that allows us to do just that. So rubber stoppers are pretty handy when we uh, work with chemicals. Okay, okay you'll see uh, these a lot of times are used in pharmacies even today for compounding medicines, which means that we're going to grind stuff up always reminds me of in the old days, you see the old stones with the Indians that are out there grinding corn and flour and stuff. And so we use this to kind of break up uh, stuff to our chemicals if they're in big lumps or chunks that we can break it down and get it into a fine powder. And that allows us, once it's in a powder form, to dissolve it easier into a liquid. So if we want to make a solution of something and maybe it's uh, salt water or sugar or something and we have these big crystal chunks of it, we can break it down to help that out. Okay. Okay, this is a microscope. Uh, you need to know all the parts, and uh, probably not for the practical, but you need to be knowledgeable of them. Uh, the eyepiece, okay? Uh, you have the nose right here that all of these lenses are attached to, and that revolves around, so we call it a revolving nose piece. Uh, we notice there's three different lenses. These are, uh, allows us to zoom in on the objects that we're looking at. Uh, we start with the small one. That's going to be the low objective, uh, medium objective, and high objective. 
And each one of those is a different strength and power. You can look on, the, on it and it tells you uh, what percentage of power it is. So like this small objective here is uh, 0.10, the medium objective is 0.25, and the high objective is 0.65. Um, this part of the microscope is called the stage. This is where we put the slides, the microscope slides. The little clips right here that you see are the clips that hold the, the, um, the slide. And so those are called stage clips. We also have an area in the stage where a hole is, and that allows light to enter the stage and come through the, micro or through the slide and allows us to see it through our uh, eyepiece. Okay? And so we also have an adjustment for that, and it's right here on the side. And that adjustment allows us to uh, allow more or less light uh, through, the, through the slide. And so sometimes the slide requires less light to see it even better. So that gives you a, a, a way to maybe view it better or, you know, make an adjustment. Uh, below the stage is this part right here. This is just the lamp. And the lamp allows the light, that's where the light is, or the light bulb, that sends the light through the diaphragm. Then, of course, you have your power switch and the base. And then we always carry our microscopes by the arm, okay? And this is a light microscope, by the way. Okay, over here, um, this object right here is a Bunsen burner. We don't really use these in this school and middle school because we don't have the gas uh, that these attach to. These have to have some sort of gas flow to make them work. And so in high school, we actually have these jets that these uh, hoses will fit on. And then the gas goes through the tube, and then we have a little vent here to allow oxygen through it. And the more oxygen you get, the better flame you can get. You can make an adjustment there to get a good flame that's going to be nice and hot and consistent. And then we just light it. And the way we light it, we can use a match. But a lot of times we can use this. And this is a striker. And it just takes that little spark to get the gas uh, to ignite. And so we use these Bunsen burners to heat up beakers and test tubes and things like that when we do chemical labs. Okay. They're not a very safe thing to use. There's other things we could use that are more safe, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So that was a Bunsen burner. This is striker. And this just has a piece of flint on the end of it. And that flint is just a type of rock that actually one of its properties is that it will spark. And they've been using those ever since uh, prehistoric days to start fire. Okay, we've got two sets of these laying out. There's this part, this, part, uh, this one, and this one here. They're both essentially the same thing. They're both tongs, and they allow us to pick up things that are hot or where there's chemical reactions happening, and we don't want the chemicals getting on our hands, so we can use these to pick up those uh, containers. This type of tong is actually called a crucible tong, and uh, it doesn't have a very wide opening, just barely enough to get my finger in it, but we usually clamp the crucible right here, like where my thumb is, and we pick it up. And a crucible is just a small little uh, bowl-looking ceramic piece, and it can handle really high temperatures. And so, um, I don't have a crucible with me, but you don't need to know that these are crucible tongs. I'm just letting you know, so if it comes up maybe in high school, you'll know, okay? But both essentially do the same thing. Okay, so we were just talking about the tongs, and so let's look at some other chemical-related items. Okay, this is a ring stand, and a ring stand uh, is used in chemistry quite often, especially in high school. Uh, we may use them in here from time to time, but if you want to use a ring stand, this is where the Bunsen burner would go. Okay, the Bunsen burner would go right here, and then you would have things sitting up on this ring, or sometimes you might have things clamped to it, like test tubes and things, but the ring stand needs something such as this for Bunsen burners to sit on. I'm sorry, for your beakers and flasks and things to sit on. And so this is just called a triangle or ceramic triangle. And we just use those because, like I said earlier, the ceramic can handle lots of heat. And what happens here is that ceramic allows the heat to flow evenly when it gets hot, okay? And so we, we will use that, or sometimes we'll use a wire gauze or wire mesh, and that'll sit up here on top. And what that allows us to do 